All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the Malapert Smart Podcast. We're here. We got Robert, the frozen Asian, but only for an hour of his precious time because he's got work early in the morning. But we have to squeeze this in with a little bit of time that we all have because, man, this week was tight. No, no extra time. I hardly had time to watch the wrestling even. Honestly, mm. I didn't watch it at all. I watched it literally all today. <laughs> I watched oh, wow. two SmackDowns, a Raw, Dynamite, and, well, Dynasty, I watched some of that. So that wow. I did see before. But thank you, Robert, for squeezing us in. Hopefully we'll get everything done in an hour or so. You know, right. we can let you go get to bed for tomorrow. Say hello, Robert. I didn't even let you talk. That's cool. What's up, guys? Glad to be here. Man, are you ready to talk about wrestling, man? I mean, I've been looking forward to talking about wrestling with you guys because last week I I was struggling to get back into the flow of of what we were going to talk about after WrestleMania. But this week I don't really care as much. It's just whatever. We're just going to hit record and talk. All right. So Vlad is here also. I am here. The wrestling expert. Malapurge Mark, future Hall of Famer. But only the one thing I don't understand, do Vince McMahon. <laughs> the one thing I, don't, I don't think you have to worry about that. The one thing, it, it, uh, I don't understand. You telling me Robert has a life outside of this podcast, <laughs> this show? Yeah, okay, me too, dude. imagine with, that. With the dating, I've been dating this this girl, and man, there's no time. How are you gonna watch wrestling when you're dating a girl? Yeah, you, know, uh, you have to pay attention to the girl. It's more important. It's definitely more important. As much as we love wrestling, man. Uh, yes, I mean, it's, well, especially if you're with her twenty four seven. I agree. It's gonna be impossible. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be damn near impossible. I agree. Well, I was trying to watch it in between, like you know, if she would turn her head, I would turn my phone and try to put on dynamite, <laughs> but it would only be for like five seconds. But oh, gosh, <laughs> that's really all you should watch oh. in dynamite, though, is five seconds. <laughs> oh, oh no, it took a long time to forward through these shows today, as we're gonna get to right now. But okay, okay. let's get to let's it. Get, yeah, let's get to it. Let's time. get to it. Yeah. All right, let's look, not mess so around. I got um, the Young Bucks stuff with FTR, and that's going to lead into our main topic for today. I know we're starting with AEW, which is unusual, but this was oh, Young Bucks versus fine. FTR number four, the fourth fight at Dynasty after what's their names? The FTR won the trilogy at All In, but this was a bloody gory fight. As I'm going to show you guys some clips right here. And there was some crazy, crazy spots. Crazy spots. Actually, I'm just going to highlight the spots. We're really not going to watch most of this match. But, oh, I like this backflip moonsault by Dax Har- or Cash Wheeler, excuse me. But you don't really see him as being that type of athletic guy, but he did a cr- another crazy thing later in the match. Well, this was one of the Bucks getting speared into a table by cash mm-hmm. this is this was a 450 and this was this was a fucked up pile driver from dax i don't know what happened there that was pretty wicked i think he was trying to sit down but he couldn't really get all the way on his butt so his feet kind of crashed into the ladder and that yeah, that could have been bad I mean, it's never. I think they were all. They were all tired too. I'm skipping through a lot. Never a good movies. idea to do that type of move on the ladder. It's not really steady, obviously. Right. Yeah, sometimes they just break with on their own without anything yeah. happening. Oh, this was the the spear from. Oh yeah. <laughs> this was, I gotta admit that was a great spot. The way he flew into it and everything oh. at full speed. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, but there was interference. FTR is gonna lose, but. They kind of messed up this ending spot, too, because Dax had to go back down. Jack Perry was a little late. That is Jack Perry. I'll just ruin it for you guys, but they said it was a fan at first. It was him? I was kidding. (laughs) (laughs) So that was the moment. The, The brave man who stood up to CM Punk is back. Yeah. The scapegoat. And then the Young Bucks win. Okay. All right. So this is going to lead into the thing I actually wanted to talk about with you guys. Unless you guys have comments about this match as a match. It didn't really have a clean ending, so it it didn't really matter, (laughs) I don't think. 
Unless Robert has something he wants to say about the match. I don't. Yeah. Well, I do have one thing, but I'll let Robert go first. Okay. Well, <clears throat> overall, I, I did enjoy the match. The, the only thing is this this was a, a direct follow-up to okay. Osprey versus exactly. um, Danielson. So I, I, at this point, I'm already exhausted. The, the, yeah. the pay-per-view could have ended right there and I would have been fine. But then yeah. there were two matches after this. This, this followed directly, uh, directly after that. So I'm yeah. like, okay, uh, let, me, let me see what happens here. Um, but, you know, I, I, this was pretty decent. Um, pretty much what I would ex expect from them. Uh, well, they, they used a lot more of, uh, t t t tables and ladders than what I remember them doing in their previous matches but overall this was good but like i said the only problem was like i i was just exhausted after the danielson osprey match but that's all i have to say about that yeah i like the the spots the crazy spots yeah. the craziness and and the return of jack perry which i thought smacked more here in this match than in what we're gonna see coming up on dynamite but vlad any comments before yeah. oh yeah you said it was gonna that it was already late in the show i didn't get that same fatigue because I watched it like through multiple sessions. Like I watched okay. an hour of the of it, and then a couple hours. And well, then... no, I was just gonna say that it followed what what Robert said. That it followed Dan yeah, yeah. and Osprey. That you know, I I think they could have changed the order of the matches. Where somehow Osprey, if they're gonna have that type of match that they had, they probably should have gone on last. But anyways, um. The, of, overall, I mean, okay, yeah, it had some spots, but ha this is a thing that happens on almost a lot of these AEW matches, so I'm not exactly sick. Uh, I didn't really see anything too crazy about this one. You know, it was, it was what it was. You're saying this could have gone on last? It would have been cool if the Jack Perry appearance was the final. No, thing. not this could have gone on last. Uh, uh, no, Osprey and Brian Danielson should have gone on last. Osprey and Danielson had a. We'll talk about that a bit later, but that had a sad ending. I don't think that would have been a nice end to the pay per view. Swerve winning the title was a nice end to the pay per view. But anyways, well, yeah, we could debate that. I guess I'll get I'll get to that. I'll get to the Osprey Danielson stuff next. That's probably our next topic after this. But I do want to jump to Dynamite when Jack Perry shows up and they're gonna the the angle was that he's gonna talk to wait i went too far ahead this was where they were in the back and he went to talk to tony khan and supposedly they were gonna hash things out or something and talk talk in the ring and put all this behind us the whole cm punk fight it all in and just so this is the end when jack perry comes to the ring mm -hmm. tony khan comes in he's really short man He's like short compared to Jack ago, Perry, which is really short. Like he is a tiny he man, it seems. <laughs> but... I don't think he's that short. He's just like a no average guy looking he's guy. guy. He's got to be really short, man. <laughs> I think he's like 5'5 five five or something. Anyways, so they hug yeah. it out. And this was the moment where, uh, Vlad, how about you're the wrestling expert. You need to analyze the work of AEW owner Tony Khan taking a wicked punch to the stomach from Jack Perry right there. <laughs> what did you think of the way he went down in a heap? Um, Should I rewind it? Let's, I mean, let's see it again. <laughs> I don't know. He was, bro. he was kind of already going down <laughs> before I, I he even hit him. So about the work. I mean, <laughs> when you get hit in the stomach, do you just like collapse like that? Like you can't move? I mean, he didn't. Like usually, you, I mean, I understand grabbing your gut if he if you got hit real hard in the stomach, but like the way I don't know. his the work. I mean, what work? <laughs> this whole thing is ridiculous. I don't. Know. Next question. Next question. Robert, what did you think of the the way he took that punch to the stomach? Um, I think I mean, the Vince more wasn't natural. The best. Eh, I don't. I think the more natural reaction he uh, should have been. He should have like, uh, um, you know, had his hand over his gut a little bit sooner, as opposed to like there were like a few seconds there where he, he was just lying flat on the floor. Yeah. But look, I I don't know. I I remember seeing Vince McMahon take um some ridiculous bumps too or it yeah just, he it wasn't the best right. at so, taking bumps yeah man, they, but it, neither one of them were good at taking bumps but i, I don't know i i can't say much about that yeah i mean i don't i don't i'm, I'm not really criticizing that i probably criticized this whole angle but you know what the more i think about it as i'm as i was about to criticize it in my head i'm like 
at least they're trying something, man. This is it's, yeah, it's I, better. It's better than yeah. it's better than the zero that they've been. So, so I, I I guess I I might as well add um, during the match when they did show Jack Perry interfering, I. Uh, you know, show, coming back, I thought that was a pretty ballsy move, actually, because especially um, after the controversy of airing the CM Punk footage and then um, you know the the crowd chanting CM Punk's name, I, I didn't think they would actually do something like this. But well, we'll see where they well, go. What did you just think they would never ever use him? Like he would never come back? Maybe not this soon. <laughs> but, um... Soon, it's been like a year. Yeah, it's been a year, but then the they aired the footage, the the CM Punk footage, like a couple of weeks ago, and and there was a lot of backlash. Um, oh yeah, that, so. you mean soon? Maybe that's why they aired it a couple of weeks ago because they knew Jack Perry was coming back. Okay. Anyways, yeah, for all sure. All right, so I'll, I'm gonna I pressed pause on the video we were watching, but the Young Bucks and uh, Okada come out. Okada who. Jim Cornette is calling uh, <laughs> Japanese Cody Rhodes. Oh, Cody. <laughs> oh, Cody, <laughs> which is so funny. I don't know why I never thought of that <laughs> because he wears a suit and he has his hair dyed. And he dyed behind. his hair. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's, so, it's, actually, it's actually genius. But then... <laughs> Call him all Cody. Oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. But so, let's continue. so the Young Bucks come out and they're like, for a second, they're at telling Jack Perry, what did you do? What have you done? But then they grab Tony Khan by both arms and everyone's like, oh, oh what? They're going to be trigger him. And that was, that was a cool moment, I thought, when they grabbed him by his arms. I thought that was a cool use of their gimmick, you know. And then I guess Okada tells him, stops them, and then he tells him to give him the TK driver, give him his the new the move they named after him, and they lift him up. And ja <laughs> Tony Khan's junk is in Nick Jaskin's face. <laughs> and they, <laughs> they give him a, but a yes. spike, a spike, both of them in a way. Oh, I see what you're saying. You want yes. me to rewind it? Yeah. No, no, no need. I don't need to see <laughs> whose junk was in whose face. Anyway, <laughs> so he takes a spike pile driver off the top rope, the TK driver, and he's going to lay there unconscious for a few minutes. And people are going to come out and people act worried, like referees and stuff. Like, what are you doing? Pushing around the v EVPs. Yeah. You know? Now they've done it. Now they've gone too far, right? But... And then I'm going to skip to the very end when they are celebrating on the ramp, the Elite and Jack Perry, and then Tony Khan's dad comes out, Chad yeah. Khan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't know that was his dad. That was yeah, his dad, that was yeah. His dad. yeah. At the last second, he came out like, what happened? What, is, what are you, they're beating up my kid? I, I invested a billion dollars so that my son could get beat up? What is going on here? So my what son is... could get paralyzed? I've lost millions of dollars so my son could get paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Continue. Continue, Continue with the, the hosting of this great show, Karen. No, that's it. I mean, that's the, the big angle they ran. Yeah. I guess I'm going to get thoughts from you guys. I'll start with Vlad. Was it believable? Was it good? I mean, it's something. It's something. It, I, was it good? No, I don't think so. I mean, was it believable? They even brought we, out Tony Khan's dad. Oh, uh, come you know? on, man. <laughs> this shit. You, Robert didn't even know who that guy was. For, for Robert, for, <laughs> oh, Robert knew that, that was this weird-looking old man. <laughs> Just like, what is, who is that guy, right? No, I, mean, I, I did know that was his dad because I've seen his picture, and I know he's one of the owners of the Jaguars, so I've seen his picture. So Yeah, I kind of figured it was him, too, by the came, but by the way he came out all worried-looking. and stuff. Yeah, you know, I mean, yes, I knew, I knew that it was his dad. But, but was it what, on a belie believability rating? Up to ten on a scale of ten, one no, to ten. It, no, no, it wasn't really believable. Obviously, it was at ridiculous. all. So it was a zero. Mm, I mean, it was, it's, it's AEW. So I mean, if we have to grade on a curve, I guess, because I mean, come on, believable AEW. Nothing. I mean, this is it's fine. I mean, the only thing I'll say it's it's an angle. That it's something. They're going with something. It's better than absolutely nothing. That they, which is what they've given us before on angles or stories or anything. I mean, usually this is a company that just says, oh, we're going to have good matches and that's all we care about, Like, which is ridiculous. It's a ridiculous strategy to have for a wrestling company to just have cold matches that don't mean anything. So at least this is something. 
you know, I don't know where it's going to go or what's going to happen, but, you know, it looks like Omega's coming back next week. I'm sure he'll be part of it. Okay, you know, I mean, I can't, I don't think it's going to be good. And based on the ratings that this thing got, nobody cares. This is They had the lowest rating in, in like, three years in AW as far as Dynamite. So, like, nobody really cares about this show, but... At least they're trying, I guess. Yeah, but it's a major angle, right, Robert? This is like basically... If if nobody's watching, is it a major angle? It's the Stone Cold angle. It's the the Stone Cold beating up the owner angle. Oh, my God. Right, Robert? You see the parallels? Okay. Okay. Okay, This is the very beginning of it, so I I don't know. Let's see how this develops, but I'm with Vlad. At least they're trying something. You know, it's... They're they're capitalizing on, you know, the, the recent controversy... Um, so they're they're doing something. There's some sort of angle here. So we'll we'll see where they go with it. Uh, when when you say believability, like what well, what do you mean by that exactly? Uh, you asked about like um, phoniness. Uh, like you know, some people could make it like uh, an AJ Styles match is a ten on the believability rating because it looks realistic. Okay, or, you know, I mean, like a Bret Hart. Tony Khan, <laughs> yeah, doesn't, it doesn't is not a wrestler though. Like so, he can't really. I kind of like what um what Vlad said about grade, grading on a curve, but you know I and I I would say the same, but in the sense that you know uh, Tony Khan's not really a, a wrestler. professional wrestler. Yeah. Like he has to do what he can <laughs> with his extremely limited experience. So uh, on of a believability, is it believable? No, but you know it, what? How much can you expect from him, really? <laughs> Okay. Well, is this going to get – what is the point? The point of this is to get heat for Jack Perry. Is it going to do that at least? Like, is this I thought I, I actually – For the whole group. Yeah. I I expected there to be um, more booths, actually. Like, I um, I heard a lot of cheers. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't, uh, I didn't even hear that. It's, maybe it'll I, depend yeah. where they are and which Yeah, I guess or... may, maybe maybe in a different venue it'll be – there'll be. Oh, that's hilarious. They hate them in Jacksonville where they own the team. <laughs> they hate Tony <laughs> Khan and, and the cons in general because they've ruined the sports there, huh? And probably ruined AW there but as well. But, okay. Well, if they think they were getting Jack Perry heat from this, like, I don't think they really needed to. Like, he's already got heat. He's with from the whole punk thing and everything. He's just from the way he is, as a, has been known as a shithead and yeah. backstage with management and stuff. I don't think they needed to make an angle where he beats up the benevolent owner. And the benevolent owner is not even someone who's very popular in the wrestling community right now. So that, you know, you're not going to really cheer him beating – Tony Khan up because nobody likes Tony Khan, right? He's horrible. He's a horrible booker. He he sucks as a booker, and he's getting a lot of the blame for AEW's troubles. So you're not gonna get like sympathy for Tony Khan and heat for Jack Perry from this. That's all I'm saying. Mm, well, yeah, you might be you probably onto something, but I think they are at least like I said, I think it's something. I don't know where yeah. it's going, and I don't think they need needed it. to do it. I don't think it's even something. I think it's a detrimental thing. I think it, oh, it would have been well. fine if he just came in. And you know it, the, the what they did at Dynasty was fine with him helping the Young Bucks. He didn't. Yeah. They didn't need to get Tony Khan involved. And there's no point getting Tony Khan involved too because the, the parallel I made to Vince McMahon and how Vince was, uh, you know, not a great seller and stuff like that. We kind of let it pass because he had such an incredible personality and he was so funny that it was like, all right, you know what? Even though he's not a great worker. We're going to let it go because he's yeah, just well, so hey, let's amazing not on the mic. Tony Khan to mm. Vince McMahon. Well, that's why as... I'm saying you should. they shouldn't have even let him on the air with this angle, really. And, is what... and what are we comparing Jack Perry to Steve Austin? I mean, it's insane. What are we? T- I, <laughs> that's insane. I mean, so look no, at him. Saying, look at him that. with his hands uh, on, on his chest like this. Like, like this is him. Well, well he's having a heart attack. <laughs> What do you want from the guy? Look, I disagree. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm actually going to defend the AW a little bit. That that they they are going for something. They don't have any angles in this company. They don't do anything. They just have matches. They don't. This is at least something. I I'm, I'm not saying it's going to end well or it's going to go anywhere. I mean, stuff happens on TV one week and then is disregarded uh, or like ignored or whatever the next week or the weeks to follow. But at least this is just, I don't know. An angle of some all sort. All right, all right, all right. I'm, unless Robert has something to say, I got to move on because we're limited on time today. So. Right, let's uh, go ahead and move on. All right. So Danielson and Osprey. That's the next thing I want to talk about. Is 
I just want to talk about the ending, the booking. Mm -hmm. There's Will Ospreay. Elevate me to the sky, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> Elevate me to the sky, whoa! <laughs> I love that fucking song. But anyways, so this was the ending where, uh, I guess, I don't know what his move is called here. Do you know this move, Robert? It's, uh, something, something Tiger Driver? I, Isn't this I the forget. Tiger Driver, the one where he, he yeah. cripples you on your head? <laughs> yeah, okay, so, da so he ta Danielson takes the, let me, the Tiger Driver. Let me just describe what happens for some people who might be listening to this. And then Danielson starts convulsing, you know, and then what the referee, actually this is interesting that the referee, let me rewind that a little bit. The referee was calling for a doctor, yeah, calling, you know, right when Danielson is vulnerable, like, come on, don't do it right now. Let him finish him off. And then Osprey didn't see that he was calling for the, for a medic and he hits yeah. him with his, with his finishing move and really fucking ends him. Because he was convulsing, and then he elbows him, and then the match ends, and then Danielson continues convulsing and everything, and Osprey's all worried about him. Uh, okay, well, I'll just give my opinion first, though, because I'll just say that I, I don't like when Danielson does this. I think this is his career-ending thing, where he's trying to make it, like, realistic, and, oh, my God, I'm getting a, I'm being paralyzed or something. Like, ah, uh, I don't know. I don't think it has a place in wrestling anymore. Maybe in the 80s when people thought it was realistic. When people thought it was real. Now, it's just in bad taste to me. So, anybody have any arguments with me or is this well, fine with I, you? Okay. Oh, Robert, Robert, you go first, brother. Okay, so let me just first say my in, in my initial reaction. Um, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't think it was anything serious I, th I thought brian um danielson was just selling it really well right and then uh and th this is all everything that was happening at, at the end um was pretty much uh gonna be part of an angle where um the don, the don callis uh, family the, the stable would turn on him because you know he's showing um you know, he 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 was showing for he was showing concern for Brian Danielson at the end. So I thought yeah. this was all part of an angle, right? So I didn't have any problem with it uh, personally because uh, that's how I that's what I thought this was the what direction this was going. So um, I, I didn't think this was in bad taste uh, personally. All right, uh, Vlad, any comments on what I said or? or I wouldn't have had a problem with it if he hadn't already done something similar to a match I didn't even watch with Okada, where he was seizuring up again and yeah. foaming at the mouth. I mean, yeah. dude, okay, we get it. If you if this is if this happens every time you have a, a serious match, then maybe you shouldn't be having a match. I I don't understand. That's how much he loves wrestling, huh? I even, know. Even well, okay, whatever. <laughs> I, if you heard, yeah, the stuff that he said on one of the collisions or dynamites that this is like heaven for him. I mean, he sounded demented. He sounded absolutely retarded. You know, uh, no wonder WWE just said, "Yeah, go away, bro. Just go, go to, the, go do whatever the hell you want to do. You sound insane." So, um, anyways, no. But look, I don't have a problem. I wouldn't have a problem with this ending or that he was fainting injury after the match, especially if, if this is like just to show that Osprey is this like re really great wrestler, right? But if he hadn't already done something like this a couple times, so. That's, that would be my only criticism of that injury angle aspect of it. All right, and then I'll give you guys a minute to comment on the match in general if you guys care. I don't know. Robert, was it a seven-star banger? Was it good? It was really good? Or was it a five-star at least? I don't know. Um, I can't give anything as more than a five stars. Come on, <laughs> okay, I'm not well Dave. Then. I'm not. I'm not Dave Meltzer. But sure, that's I'll, fine. Okay, uh, sure, I'll I'll give it a five star. But you know, there there are times when i you know my initial like prisoner prisoner of the moment type reaction i would give a match a five star but later on down the road you know looking back i um i don't i wouldn't give it a five star anymore so we'll we'll see if i still think of it as a five star but uh you know right now sure i, I would say it is and um just just based on the ring work alone that the build it's you know, the build leading up to this wasn't Great, yeah, but just... then, but uh, but let, let me give you a couple, couple other matches as an example that I give five stars to. Right, there's uh, I forgot which WrestleMania it was, but there was a Kurt Angle versus Shawn Michaels match in, 
I want to WrestleMania 21, 22. I forgot yeah, which you one. Think you're around, yeah, it's 21, around 21 or 22, I think. Um, that that match, I get five stars. I I can watch that match anytime and and absolutely love it. And I don't remember the build to it at all. Um, uh, Bret Hart versus Stone Cold, uh, and and I, again, I can't remember which WrestleMania. WrestleMania. That one I do remember. WrestleMania 13. Okay, that one. I don't remember the build to that either, but I can put on that match right now and still love it. It was classic. And I think uh, later on down the line, I could say the same about this. This is really good. So, um, yeah, uh, my initial pre pre preliminary rating for this for the moment, I'll, I'll give it a five star. We'll see if I still I, if it still holds up to me as a five star later on down the line. But, yeah, I I love it. There, there was one spot I just... I don't know how they fake this. There, um, where, where uh, Osprey looks like he was going for the cutter, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then Danielson hit him with the knee in the face. I'm like, mm. how do you guys do this? Oh, yeah, that <laughs> I, was a great I, spot. I remember yeah, that one. I don't know how they do I that. I didn't have it bookmarked, but yeah, yeah, I saw that one live, and I, that was mm -hmm. crazy. I, I, yeah, I popped for that. I was like, whoa, that's well, Vlad, crazy. Are you going to give it five it. stars too or what? Just based on the match itself? Can you, can you do that? Um, well, you know, I, I've heard everyone pretty much to the praise this match to the moon. Even, even Cornette thought that this was great. And I, I mean, I guess I'll say as far as modern matches go, the modern style of match, this was as, probably as good as it gets. Uh, based on the two guys involved, it's just not so. It's just not my type of match. The stuff where they don't sell stuff and they chop each other and they do a whole bunch of stuff that I just don't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's, I would give it five stars, honestly. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand the style. I don't understand why it's done. I mean, I, I mean, okay, maybe call me, I don't know, old school or just call me someone that doesn't understand modern wrestling. I guess, but I don't understand that style of match. I, I don't understand how that makes sense to just hit each other, not sell moves, like get dropped on your head, pop right back up, do that. I mean, okay, like I said, it's a modern style match. I wouldn't give it five stars, but for the modern style and and for the two guys involved, I guess it's as good as it's gonna as it gets. I don't I don't really know how else to describe it, but no, not my style, not something that I would want to watch again you know or anything like yeah, that yeah it didn't excite I, me it didn't give me that i, I don't understand feeling. it i don't understand it i mean it pretty much been crazy. i praised. understand it some people no, I, mean, I don't like understand the i don't understand the love for these type of matches what I'm, is what i'm saying i understand the match i just don't understand the, the praise and the love i mean saying that it's a six i mean i think Meltzer said it was six and a half saying that it was the best wrestler, wrestling match in north america i mean just stupid stuff just stuff that like this this makes me think like what like, did you not ever see a Bret Hart match? Did you not ever see a Shawn Michaels match? Did you not ever see yeah. a Kurt Angle? I mean, I like, what are you really, talking about, man? Well, the thing that Robert said of how, yeah, sure, there was no angle leading up to this, but I think that kind of matters, and it, it adds to the match. Like, it, the match becomes even more intense when there's something extra other than it just being a match where they're trying to see who wins, you know? When there's an extra like hatred or something, or or like MJF and and CM Punk when when they're like they look at each other and there's like literally hatred in their eyes, and then there's the matches where they're just like trying to see who wins, and they're trying to have a banger with like a bunch of crazy moves. So yeah, I wouldn't give this five stars just be, just based on the the feeling test. Like I just didn't feel it was five stars. I didn't feel overexcited by it. And la yeah, like Vlad said, I probably won't ever watch it again. So. Not five stars for me. Four point seven. <laughs> Jesus, you, what are you okay. kidding me? Well, if in that case, it is basically a five star match. If you round okay, up. So, uh, okay, so, Keon, just just out of curiosity, what, what would you give the Shawn Michaels versus Kurt Angle match oh, from WrestleMania? Yeah, five stars. Five stars, but also okay. because because they made a little more sense too. Like I would take off points for like Vlad says when they do that stupid shit where they like chop me and you chop me or you punch me in the face and i'll just take it okay. like go ahead punch me in the face they, like they i don't i don't so many times in this match it's, it, was, it was asinine or or go ahead and kick me in my chest like when they're on their knees and like oh you know, my god go you know i don't i don't like it so yeah, yeah i'm not i'm not in agreement but you know it was good though so anyways uh, the angle to me was more interesting at the end but the part what was interesting about how they were trying to call the medic and they didn't see it and they he yeah. went ahead and hit him anyways to me that was an intricate ending that i thought was was cool mm -hmm. anyways let's move on to 
Swerve Strickland winning the world title. I'm not gonna do the whole match. I'll just show like the ending where he got his. Well, he came out in a in Black Panther. Black, oh, Panther Black Panther suit, Panther. which was pretty cool. Swerve did, and uh, then Prince Nana did the dance. Every time I see Nana, I can't help but laugh. <laughs> I try not to, but the She's... guy is hilarious. That's his whole career is to just do this dance because <laughs> he makes a lot of money dude. off of it. <laughs> I'm for he it, is man. the He's best playing. at doing that dance. I've never seen yeah. a fan in the crowd do, do it like it. him. Yeah. It's a hard <laughs> dance to do. Anyways, two curb stomps, and I don't know if you guys want to comment on how well Joe did at putting Swerve over. I guess that was his job today, to make him the new champion. So, I'll start with Robert this time. What did you think of, of this putting over of Swerve so, Strickland finally it was it was it was bound to happen <laughs> so I, I want to start off by saying all right a few weeks before this match huh yeah it was predictable it, it was uh, a few weeks before this match we saw um a Samoan lose uh the the world championship oh, right at Wrestlemania now now we see another Samoan lose uh Wait, the main Samoa championship Joe is another... not Samoan oh he, he's not Hell I didn't no. know that. Oh, He's wow. from California. <laughs> okay, my bad. I didn't know that. What? It, I don't, doesn't he have some sort of Samoan ancestry or something? Yeah, no. why would he come with Samoan I don't Joe? think so. I mean, maybe. I, well, he's definitely maybe way in his ancestry, but he's oh. he's not Samoan at all, honestly. I never knew I, that. I, his, his name I mean, I know he's from Samoan California, Joe. but doesn't he... There must be... Why does he call himself... So, that's a great question. Why does he call himself Samoan Joe, then? Well, I'll look that up while Robert okay. is giving his, his comments. Can continue. <clears throat> Anyways, um, th this was predictable. I, I, you know, I think a, a lot of people could have seen this one coming. Um, now I remember many many months ago I, I, after the um, that hardcore match he had with Hagman Page, I I did mention on this show that he would get that uh, a Britt Baker style push similar to what uh, she had after her match with Thunder Rosa, right? So I I, I think it took a little uh, longer than Britt Baker, but it finally happened. So uh, good for him. I think he's. He's been on a really good run, and he deserves the title. Um, yeah, I, I loved but, it. And Joe, jo, uh, sorry, go ahead. What Joe did say? a good job putting him over. Yeah. It made him look good. I think so. All right, yeah. then. Vlad, what about you? You got any comments about Swerve finally winning the title? This is what we've, no, we've was, all been was, waiting for, huh? It was probably, yeah, they probably could have done it. Maybe uh, they shouldn't have had that triple threat that they had like a month or two back. They probably didn't need that. They could have done it before. Uh, Joe's great. Joe's great. You know, I love Joe. Uh, but I think it's it's always good to push young um, over wrestlers. And Swerve is over. He's good. Um, I mean, there's things I don't like about it, but there's a lot of things I don't like about modern wrestling. So it's... It, he's, he's fine. I like him. He seems like a good guy. Um, and I wish him well. And I think Joe did fine. Joe did fine putting him over. Again... At this point, of, I only saw three matches, and I was already tired of the show because, and I didn't even see the the prior seven matches that they had on this card. Uh, so I could only imagine how bad that must have been because I was already like, oh boy, this is, I can't, you know, I just can't wait for it to be over. But yeah, good, good for Swerve, good for Swerve. Uh, hopefully, he has a good reign. Yeah, well, it's already been kind of one of those cases of the chase was more. Uh, satisfying than actually becoming champion because on Dynamite what did they do? He fought Kyle Fletcher he had a match he didn't even get to talk yeah, and then, and then on, he did talk on Collision but he talked on Collision and then he defended his title against who was it? Uh, Claudio Claudio Castagnoli okay so yeah I don't know weird start to his reign as champion yeah, but... well, <clears throat> like I said I, I wish him luck he, he's gonna need it given who his, who you know who the booker is all right the other thing i wanted to mention from well two more things i think from dynasty is let me rewind to dynasty sorry i know i have a bookmark for this give me one second oh here it is it's tony storm against Whoa. thunder rosa and i guess 
Tony Storm used the she kicked her in, a, in her ovaries, right? That's what right there. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and the whole crowd even went, oh, right there. And I was gonna ask you guys, is that like a thing? Like, is that is like because women say it's like getting kicked in the balls when they get kicked in the ovaries that it hurts the same, but it's not an us? illegal move. You're gonna ask us? I I, I mean, wouldn't know. Ask, I wouldn't know the answer to that. You should that, probably yeah. ask a woman. Shouldn't this be an, it's, so it's not an illegal move because I've never seen it before, but maybe they just have I like mean, an etiquette not to do that. Because why why doesn't every girl do this then in every match? Well, it's probably considered a low blow. Yeah, like a low yeah. blow. Yeah. Well, the referee's not looking. Yeah, she 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 right. did she it. She did around. it while the referee wasn't. Yeah, so it, it's probably illegal to hit somebody low like that, even if they don't have quote unquote <laughs> balls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'll look this up at some other point then. For for right this now, this is the question. This is what you wanted to know about this match. <laughs> Good well, God. Tony, oh, Tony Storm, oh, we don't have a lot of time. Robert's got to go in the right, 20 minutes. Okay. Anyways, Tony Storm wins okay. beat Thunder Rosa. Not a bad booking, but I guess next for her is um, Serena D, who came out on Dynamite. But I don't think we're going to talk about that. There she is. There's Tony Storm getting carried out by Luther to end the night. Okay, the other thing I, I kind of liked, I guess I'll mention, was Jericho and Hook. But something that Taz said to start the, the night when he got tree. My wife and I Jericho! No, I just want to say one thing about this learning tree. My wife and I, when Hook was very young, we taught Hook, be careful when you sit on the trees because you get shit on your head then. So there's no learning tree needed here. Right. Well, let, me, let me ask you this. <laughs> so there's Taz talking shit That's about Jericho. That's what he was Jericho. telling his son. Don't sit. In... Uh, okay, never mind. Uh, well, he's talking bad about Jericho because I get Jericho it, I get talked it. bad about him and questioned his parenting of Hook. Tried to mentor Hook, but now here they are in a match after Jericho refused his mentorship. But there were some spots in this match too. This was a hardcore match for the FTW oh, title. That what it was? There's Jericho going through a table. Here's it's for the world. <laughs> two so Judas bad. effects, by the way, from Hook, and he kicked out. This is the second one, yeah. and so he's like Superman. They're making him like a Superman type character here, that can take all these crazy finishing moves and still kick out. So then that led to the ending of the match where uh, Jericho had to grab a baseball bat and fuck hook up with the bat and basically hook was like go ahead and hit me with it and then he cracks him in the face with the baseball bat which i thought looked kind of realistic i thought that looked kind of cool <sighs> and then they they sold it at the end shit. jericho didn't win the win the ftw title he did win the ftw title there's taz hook's dad getting in the ring telling him to to you know leave i guess and Jericho walking away with the title, and then the doctors and the medics have to attend to Hook. Uh, Robert, did you have any comments on this? Well, I mean, I kind of like this. I kind of liked how he got cracked in the face at the end, honestly. Um, okay, well, personally, as, as, a, as a match as a, as a whole, this is my least favorite of the whole card. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but that, that shot with the bat, um, you, usually when you see someone get hit, you know, in the head with a bat, they 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 do it in a way where it's like uh, maybe the tip of the bat is covered by the um, the attacker's hand or something like that. You know, there there's there's not really a uh, that much contact, um, or, or you know, at least in the head. You know, uh, they, I've seen wrestlers get hit in like the stomach or something like that, but in the head, I've I've never seen a shot in the head like that. Yeah, that was kind of so, unique. I thought same um, same thing. I never seen someone get really get cracked yeah. in the face with a baseball bat, and it looked may, fine. maybe maybe they got maybe they captured it in the right. Look, you know, it was a gimmick angle. bat. It had yeah. to have been. No, he didn't really hit him. It, he kind of just stopped short of it, and he kind of just yeah. moved his face back. They, they did, just they, did they it. They really got well. it in the right angle. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that was my comment about that. The other one is Eddie Kingston trying to fire up like the ultimate warrior here. And then he falls on his ass. Fat ass Eddie Kingston. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> so, I'm going to skip over that though. That was a useless tag team match. Six man tag between House of Black and Edge Kingston and uh, Mark Briscoe. 
And then the last thing, I mean, Willow, Willow winning the title, uh, the TBS title. I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's anyone who wants to comment on that. I'm just covering AEW news I from don't. the past week, but unless Robert wants to say something about that, but I, I have no uh, opinion one way or the other. Well, House, House of Black didn't help Julia. They just kind of left her on. I guess she's kind of separate entity. She has Sky, but I don't know. She just lost this. I didn't really pay attention too closely to how it happened. Robert, any thoughts about this before I move on? Oh, Robert froze. Oh, no. I think he's coming back. He's back. Oh, there you are. He's oh, my back. God. Oh, you, oh, you, mi you missed it, Kehan. I, I gave that Willow match a five-star rating. Yeah, yeah, you missed it. We, he, 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 told, he told us that that was the best match in North American <laughs> <laughs> Yes, in North American soil. What the <laughs> best he's ever seen. <laughs> Dude, I wish I got that on tape. Yes, he, has. he said it was... <laughs> Almost a seven star match, but about six and a half. I, I was very tempted to give it seven. Yeah. Yeah. He said six and a half because <laughs> let's just be honest, seven is only for like Omega and Osprey. Well, for anyone who's listening out there, I did. Uh, my computer froze for a second, but all is all is well now. Give me one second, guys. I guess I guess it wasn't meant to be my my review of this match. It, it just wasn't meant to be recorded. It wasn't made to make air. <laughs> So what's your prediction for tomorrow's Laker Nuggets game? Oh, um, they probably lose. I mean, I, at least they didn't get swept. Mm -hmm. I guess that's some the only good thing that came from that. Uh, that I don't see them extending it in, in any further than that, though. They had an opportunity if they had held on to game two. Right. Uh, didn't blow that game. Maybe it would have gone further, but um, maybe could have even gone six or seven games. I mean, it would have gone six at three, at least. Did, at the, the, did the Suns get swept? They did. The Suns oh, did get swept. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Anthony Edwards is oh, he's a really beast. good. Man, he's that, a, was one, that was one thing we totally got wrong. But... We completely got that. Me and Caroline did our predictions, and we both picked the Suns, and we got that completely wrong. This is a new NBA. It's a new NBA, man. We don't get it. <laughs> it's like Vlad doesn't get the modern wrestling. <laughs> he doesn't get this <laughs> up and down, fucking flying. No, down no, it's not even that. It's not even that. I, I just thought that it would be a bad matchup for Minnesota, but I was, I, I was I'm watching the. Completely wrong on that. I, I was watching the Clippers versus Mavericks game. That was a great that game. game was, too. was wild. The, the, the Mavericks were down by thirty-one points. Yeah. Then, then they managed to tie the game. But then they, they even took the lead. lead. They even took the lead. Oh, that's right. I forgot that you even took the lead. Yeah. Kyrie, uh, Kyrie was awesome. With no I, Kawhi, huh? So who who carried the Clippers? Uh, you, Harden. <laughs> you, you you wouldn't believe it, but it was Harden. <laughs> and then, yeah. It was Harden and George actually. Wow! What what an embarrassment of riches. They got Kawhi out, but they still got James Harden and Paul George. Well, I mean, those guys have had playoff troubles, but playoff P, at least he got to the conference finals one time. So he can't he say he's a, a full choker. And James Harden, eventually you'd think he would just, like, fucking get over it and just play. Like, stop being nervous, man. Just fucking play. I don't – you think it's just nerves? I don't think I don't think it's just nerves, dude. It's not just nerves. But anyway, he's not good in the playoffs ever? Yeah, it's not just nerves. It's because of well, we could talk about that another time. But yeah, yeah, we're on a basketball yeah, side here. But yeah, yeah, uh, let's but get the, let's get back on topic. All right, we're done to talking AEW. Uh, we got ten minutes left with Robert. I guess we'll talk about some WWE real quick. We could jump to uh, Solo Sokoa uh, on SmackDown. This is SmackDown from two weeks ago, though. Talking about okay. how he had to kick Jimmy out. And mm -hmm. they brought in Tamatanga. So it hit the bloodline is basically just Solo and Tamatanga now with Paul Heyman. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Basically. So, and they were feuding with Kevin Owens, who I thought was kind of cool because Tamatanga came out and uh, Kevin Owens was already getting beaten up by him and he had color already coming out of the entrance ramp. And I heard somewhere that WWE is technically not PG anymore, mm -hmm. that they're going to go back to doing stuff like this. So. Mm -hmm. Kevin Owens is bleeding. So I thought this little scene they had with Kevin Owens from two weeks ago, which continued on this past Friday's SmackDown, Kevin Owens got back at them. But this scene was kind of cool where KO was trying to fight them both off and he's too brave for his own good. But uh, 
Solo is is doing a lot of. I guess the storyline is that Solo is doing a lot of decision making for the Bloodline without Roman, and Roman is nowhere to be found. But what? Any comments on that, Robert? Do you want to comment on these angles that is going on with the Bloodline and Solo? And they did get drafted, right? They got yeah, drafted to her. SmackDown from this this past Friday. Yeah, yeah, they got okay. drafted to SmackDown. Um. So yeah, I think this. This is an interesting angle so far. I, uh, I'd love to know. I, I'm pretty sure they're gonna, you know, have some more members, uh, some new members on on this blood. I, I don't think it's just gonna stay as Solo and Tamatanga. Yeah, that's and true. It, and for it, right it's now, funny, it's kind of um, weak. Yeah, right. For now, yeah. Um, but it's cool. I, I I've heard more words come out of Solo Sokoa's mouth in the past two or three weeks than I have in the past two years. So. You think he's <laughs> doing a good job? I do. I think, yeah, I think so. He's not not bad actually. So you know, he can he can only get better from here, right? Yeah. Um, but does so it yeah, work I'm, with his look, with how how big he is, his experience I mean, he, from what we've seen from him? Is this storyline working? It's the side. You know, it's still in the beginning stages. It's hard to say, but yeah. Um, you think we'll, it's gonna we'll work? You think Solo's gonna pull this off? I do. He might. Uh, they, they'll need some more members still, uh, obviously, but I think they could still do it. Interesting, interesting. All right, Vlad, any comments on Solo Sokoa these past couple of weeks yeah, from SmackDown? Yeah, I was trying to keep my mouth shut, but every time you asked, did you think you would pull this off? I had to keep I'm like, yeah, I think it's going to work. It's going to work. Uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. I think it's been a good angle. I think it's been one of the only really good stuff that's been on SmackDown the last couple of weeks. Uh, the draft stuff I really hate because it's a waste of time. Nobody cares where anybody's yeah, it's going. terrible. I it's one of the worst know. shows they could. I don't know why they don't just get rid of that. That's just a waste of a show. They spent so much time on it. It's so dumb. They're like pretending like they're like the NFL draft or something. It's just ridiculous. It it, it looks awful. It's, it's terrible. It, they should get rid of that whole thing. But the one thing that's been good is uh, the stuff with the bloodline, the stuff with Solo. I don't know what I think. And did they maybe they already explained, but what an MFT is? Is that what he said he is? He's his yeah, MFT. I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what that for. means. Nobody knows what it means. <laughs> Could they have explained uh, what that means? I thought you guys would know because I've been I was kind of forwarding through the show and skipping through it. No, oh, I have no idea what that. I means. have no idea what it means. Zero idea what it means. I don't know if it's some sort of Samoan thing that we're supposed to know what that means or what some yeah, sort of no tribe idea. thing, but I don't even have any idea. But so I, there's a uh, marriage and family therapy. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Okay. This is exactly what Cornette did on his podcast because he had no idea what it was either. And oh, him God. and Brian Last are looking it up and they're like, none of this makes any sense. <laughs> well, I like this one, Mission First Tactical. Like he's the, the first uh, yeah. man. On, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, mean, I, I, thought, I mean, I must have not been clo listening closely. because No, they didn't no, say no. it. They, 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 never they, said never it. Described, they, they never described what that was. So. Yeah. Uh, but do I, li I like the angle? I mean, the one thing I didn't really like is that they said that uh, Tomatonga ran into Kevin Owens, like they slammed into his car. Uh, that's a little too much. Like, that wouldn't happen. Like, that's not realistic. Like, nobody, they're not going to allow somebody to just crash into somebody's car and c try to commit murder. Uh, to, you know, like, that's just dumb. Like, no, that's not, not believable. That's just Major not. Major fucking troublemaker. Okay, that, that that makes sense. That would make sense. Do you think that's what it stands for, or is that a guess? Somebody said as a guess. Oh no, that's cornet. I'm sorry. I, that, uh. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that I think that is what he said as far as a guess, but he didn't know. All right, um, all right, all right. Let's quickly anyways, run through a couple of angles. Yeah. Or if you're not done, go ahead. No, I was basically done. I just said I like it, but I didn't like the stuff where he crashed into Kevin Owens' car as the reason that he was so bloodied up. But that's about it. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then a couple last other angles from WWE. I guess Becky Lynch won that Battle Royal yeah. to win the women's world title that Rhea Ripley relinquished after injury. So her and Liv Morgan were the last two in there, and no, Becky wins God. the title. Good, thank She's God. as good as anyone, I guess, right, Robert? It's yeah. fine. What are you going to do? Maybe they could have made somebody new, like Maxine Dupree. But uh, uh, <laughs> shush. Like your mind. shush, shush. <laughs> Anyways, other than that, I guess Chad Gable came out and explained himself for why he betrayed 
No, not betrayed, but turned on Sami Zayn, and yeah, now he's, he's turned. Oh, okay, so I didn't, yeah. I didn't watch Raw, so I don't, I don't even know what he said. What did, what did he say? He just said he's been wasting his time training a bunch of losers, and even what? scolded his own guys in the Alpha Academy. Uh, what's that guy's yeah, name? I, the were, the Japanese those, guy, K- uh, Kazawa. Kazawa, maybe. Said that he's he sucked. He always loses. Maxine Dupree, same thing. He's been wasting his time. She stinks. Basically, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, basically, okay. basically. And then he said he's going to force them to, to he forces Otis to say, I'm going to help you no matter what. And when he still has his goal of winning the Intercontinental title. So his group is supposed to be like his new henchmen to help Yeah, him. just to concentrate on him being a success, basically. Yeah. So, okay. I don't know. I guess I was, I've, I guess Robert didn't see it, so I can't really get comments on it. But Vlad, did you see it? Is this, yeah. is this interesting I, I, to you? Um, I mean, it's, it's better than it's better than what he was doing like five, six months ago, where he, he was just like a laughing stock and stuff like that. Yeah, this is serious stuff. I like him. I mean, I, obviously he's a he's a great wrestler warrior, as Kevin would say. <laughs> <laughs> call them wrestlers. Call them warriors for God's sakes. They're not workers. <laughs> well, you think he's a great worker? No, you can I say worker he- here. Oh, okay. okay. I do think he's a great. Mark. I do think he's a great worker. I think he's been uh, punished, not punished deliberately, but just with ridiculously stupid booking uh, that's made him a joke. But I think this is a, a step in the right direction. Him and Sammy could have a great feud. Great feud if if done right. So yeah, yeah so okay. far we'll see. But so far so good. All right. One last thing I'll mention at the buzzer since Robert's gonna leave. It's ten thirty. He's gotta go to bed. But this is. Uh, Drew McIntyre sitting cross-legged in the ring, with like, uh, like, CM like CM Punk. Yeah, he's still on that. He's still on that thing about losing the title. He didn't get a rematch. He was put in a fatal four-way and all that. But the funniest thing here was that uh, when they were wanting him, you know, when they do the Stone Cold, what, 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 the whole yeah, crowd, crowd's wanting him. And he's listening to what he says, Robert, because I don't think you heard this. Say okay. what if you're Wait, wrestling. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on, hold on. Well, that's my complex relationship no, with professional wrestling. Yeah, I can't hear you. Oh, no? No audio? Oh, my bad. Hold on. Damn it. It's because I had to reset the thing. Sure sound. All right, here it goes. Well, that's my complex relationship with professional wrestling. Say what if you French kiss your cousins? You're sick. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> wow. So uh, he gets interrupted by Seamus there, and they kind of go off on another thing. But it's still nice that they're giving Drew McIntyre a lot of time to talk on this show. So that's basically all I got, man. I don't think we really need to talk about a lot of, a lot of other things. I mean – you, we could talk about uh, Chuck Taylor's dog. On Very cute minutes. dog. He, he was going to have a, a street I got to do this on my own. A parking lot match. That thing. is an adorable dog. So. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for the dog, but everybody else, you know, they, everybody else here can kick rocks. How but, about this but, guy, Vlad? Did you like this? Dude, the, the beast what was where? this? Now, face, this no! Face. I don't even know what the hell this was. What it was the heck sort of, is this? It was just, it was some collision. It was some nonsense. <laughs> It was just two, well, it was two guys I, from AAA, I think. I don't know. Yeah, well, no, it's right. No, one of them was Penta. The Beast. No, uh, uh, Felix. Felix. Phoenix. Phoenix and Mark. Ah, same well, thing. Felix. Collision was interesting to me because uh, Tony Khan came out and he was selling his neck injury. He, like, he came out and greeted the crowd, thank you for coming, <laughs> but he had, like, a neck brace on, you know. And oh, t- I heard he had that at the NFL draft that he was selling it and uh, yes. Pat, McAfee, Pat McAfee was talking about it because he was hosting the NFL show and he mentioned like that he's oh look at Tony Khan with his you know with his neck brace uh, just so, uh, selling his injury right? selling his, he, even, he, he, I, yeah but McAfee was going with it which was kind of funny considering their rival companies you know no they were keeping kayfabe and and what about how about Tony Khan keeping kayfabe like the old days man yeah what well that? you know I mean he's not <laughs> <laughs> oh but, shit! By the way, guys, I guess I fucked up for the past few segments. You guys did switch, so Vlad became a frozen uh, agent. 
<laughs> and Robert became a, a wrestling expert. <laughs> well, it's all right. We, I think it's fine to switch once in a while. I've always wanted to be a frozen. When my idiot. computer crashed, I couldn't figure out how oh, to switch no. it back, so I just said, "Fuck it." Anyway, I don't care. Okay. No, but really quick, really quick, before Robert goes, I, I think he should check out that shame because the Drew and Seamus thing from Raw was pretty funny. Okay. Seamus has recently come back. Does not look to be in great shape. Mm, and Drew really killed him pretty hard on on the fact of how he looks. Uh, uh, you know, just based. Well, on yeah, nobody he... looks like Drew too, man. He's like fucking. No, but Sheamus used to be before the injury. Yeah. He came back. He was yeah. pretty ripped. He not came anymore. back and he looked like he had just been drinking beer and eating burgers the whole time. You know. I... Yeah. Well, he's rich now, so why not? Fuck it. Oh, so... and then uh, AJ Styles versus Cody Rhodes. They had a contract signing, but it was very amicable. Very like respectful yeah, contract. Yeah, I, I, I thought they were they were to they were gonna come to blows, but no, nah, it hasn't happened yet. It might still happen before they have their match, but uh, yeah. that's gonna be a good match, huh? That's pretty much a dream match. It oh yeah, it will be a good match. It will be a good match, of course. Yes. I, I don't think it's it, it's not gonna be like a crazy psychotic match because they're just no. not gonna book it that way. No, but it'll, be just... it'll be like a it'll really match. good match for the wrestling fan who's a fan of the work. The yeah. working, as they say, because wrestling is fake, phony bullshit. But anyways, warriors, <laughs> you call the warriors, damn it! Oh, you get out of this show. Yeah, Can if you me? guys don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about the last week's episode when we <laughs> covered uh, my failed Mark show, where we <laughs> pretended not pretended, but we did a show where we covered wrestling as if it was real, but it wasn't. It didn't go well because the guy couldn't do it. The guy who was my co-host. I don't K-Fain. want to say his name. <laughs> Fuck that guy. But anyways, Robert, thank you for joining us tonight. Go to bed. Right. I know you got work right. early and you're working overtime and shit. So. Yeah, no. All right. For All the right. Frozen Asian, for the wrestling expert. I'm the player. Frozen Asian around and here. And for Hall of Famer, <laughs> Elora. Elora for Smart Asian. Hall of Famer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right. Thank you, guys, for covering this week of wrestling. We'll see you next week. Uh, Have a good night, guys. All right. Take care, guys. Good night. All right. Bye.